Good afternoon and uh, welcome back, guys. Um, have you guys heard about PSR? No. So that's what you're going to hear about. Um, do you guys use PHP? Do you have any favorite framework? OK. Anything else? OK. So any other framework that you like and use? Excel. OK. There are so many frameworks in PHP, right? How to get interoperability between the frameworks? If you are in one camp and uh, never switched, you may not care. But if you have to move between the frameworks and uh, you like some component of a framework and uh, you miss that in the new framework that you are using, you will feel the pain. That is where uh, PSRs come in. They come up with some recommendations to uh, how to make uh, components interoperable. So you can take uh, a component from one framework and you will be able to use it in another. So uh, let us welcome uh, Zion to talk about that. Hi, my name is uh, Zion. Today, uh, this will show be on uh, understanding and uh, implementing PSR. Uh, some housekeeping. The Wi-Fi SSID and the password is uh, on the wall. Uh, the one on the right is the uh, SSID. Um, there will be some short, hopefully short, uh, lab practices, some hands-on. Uh, so you will need PHP more or equals to 5 to 5, preferably 7. You will need Composer as well. A web server is optional because as for PHP 5.4, we it has an inbuilt web server. You can just run from command line, PHP dash uh, PHP space minus s space localhost and your port. Uh, and if you have forgotten to bring your laptop for a workshop, you can use pen and paper. So uh, if you have not installed PHP, which I will highly doubt since you are here for PHP conference, the, there are some notes where you can find out how to install it. Uh, bit.ly slash zn hyphen psr. Okay, a little bit about myself. Uh, as I say, my name is Zion. I was formerly a freelance web developer for two years. Uh, I've been programming since 14. Uh, I picked up PHP around the year 2000. Um, let's just check the website. Uh, this is my personal website. Uh, I'm a Zen certified engineer as well in uh, PHP as well as uh, Zen framework. So if you want to contact me, you can come to my website and try to click on the TD bird. Okay. Uh, our workshop agenda for today. What is PSR? PSR zero auto loading standard. PSR one, two. Four, which is also another auto loading standard, and finally PSR seven, the HTTP message interface. Okay, so first thing, what is PSR? It stands for PHP Standards Recommendation. So it was um, proposed by the PHP Framework Interoperability Group, FIG for short. Anyone, uh, any guesses on uh, how this uh, FIG came about? People argue. People argue. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay. okay, it was at a PHP conference just like this. It was at the PHP Tech Conference in uh, 2009. So these um, representatives from each major framework, they came together and said, see, we are all doing our own stuff. And then when someone learns Symfony framework, they go to another company that, which is using, let's say, Zen framework. They have to relearn everything again. Why not we try to make something, uh, try to find the common points so that we can work well with one another and most importantly, improve the employability of PHP developers so that it's easier for PHP developers to find jobs everywhere. So right now, there's about 40 plus voting members as of now from various projects like Composer, Drupal, Magento, Pair, Zen Framework, Laravel, and uh, Symfony Framework. These projects, they adopt the standards. Others are welcome to. You are welcome to. I'm welcome to. But it's not compulsory. Hence the word recommendations. OK, 
Okay, I'm sure uh, this cartoon is quite familiar. Now, PHP being easy to pick up, it sees many different types of developers uh, with different type of quality, uh, a skill level, uh, many different type of uh, design patterns, many type of implementations for the same type of problem. This has led to some impression, some, uh, that PHP is no good. Like, uh, I was, uh, sometimes you see some security uh, penetration tester here. This website is done in PHP, uh, not Java. Mm, I think got a lot of vulnerabilities. That's because there are too many varying standards. Okay, so, uh, but the thing, the fact is PHP powers over 82% of the websites in the world. So, we do have a use case for ourselves. So, projects who join FIG as voting members, they do so because they want developers who use and contribute to their projects to use these standards, to be exposed to best practices, and to help shape the future. Okay, I'm going to, as you go through the PSL, sometimes you will see these words. Must, must not, required, shall, shall not, should, should not, recommended, may, optional. A lot of documents are like uh, those documents drafted by the ITF, Internet Engineering Task Force. How your SNTP, your email runs, how your DNS server runs, all these are implemented based on RFC. Okay? So uh, a lot of them, they use this kind of terminology to say, this should be done for it to be operable, compatible with everyone. This is recommended, but not compulsory. So with that, we start with the first one. In the very beginning, okay, this is how I started uh, 16 years ago. We mix everything together. So your database code will be here at the top. Uh, it's pure, uh, pure procedural programming. We will check our super global post for a submit. We will run an SQL statement, uh, and we will run, render the HTML over here. So this, in short, is spaghetti code. Okay? You are mixing everything together. Let's say if one day I want to change the HTML or change a variable, I need to go to thousands of files to change it. It's all tight, too tightly coupled together. Later on, uh, we started using include files with common functions. So instead of uh, having duplicates of the same type of code everywhere, we extract them up to different uh, include files. Now, um, one question. Anyone knows which folders or which directories include users to find the files? Like? Like? <coughs> like. It's a library folder. Okay, there's a library folder, but how does it find the library folder in the first place? To the PHP init file. Okay, PHP init file. Uh, it, he is not the official answerer. Okay, other people can answer as well. Uh, one, 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 the first place that it finds will actually be the current folder, obviously, and the, all the subfolders. And um, let me see whether I can change this. Okay, like uh, what uh, Hui Ren has said, there is an include path in your php.ini where you can actually put uh, which are the which is the path of the trees that you want include or require include once and require once to actually find when you try to include a file. Okay, one problem with this include is you find that actually there's a is log invalid. So uh, I find that let's say if I start to use uh, include a file written by someone else, there is a very high possibility of name collision. Someone may call his function is log invalid. And global functions is uh, kind of uh, something that should be avoided. So uh, with uh, PHP 5, 5.3 especially, uh, they started including uh, classes and namespaces. So a simple class, a namespace. Namespace, uh, say that I'm using a library from Zen, so namespace Zen. I'm using a library from Amazon. Perhaps it came out of an SDK, so it will be namespace Amazon. So it helps to segregate, say, I can have a namespace Amazon class bar. I can have a namespace Zen, I have a class bar as well. 
So from common files to common libraries of files, uh, instead of include statements everywhere, we started using namespaces. So with namespaces, the thing is, where are the include statements? How does PHP know actually where to include it? So auto-loading, the title there, auto-loading standard. Auto-loading is where you specify a name, space, or the class. Like in this case, useful bar, when I instantiate the bar variable, you know that, OK, I'm looking for the second class over there. How will you know where to find it? So this is where auto-loading comes in. And um, the most basic is actually you can write a function to tell PHP, OK, you give me a class name, I will uh, retrieve the contents and include the file for you. So how to register it? SPL um, underscore autoload underscore register the name of the function. OK, I'll go through a few of the things. This is plug directly from PSR0. So what is needed, what is required? If you want to comply with PSR0, what do you need? First thing, a fully qualified namespace and class must have the following structure. Slash vendor name, okay, not package name. Slash vendor name, let's say Amazon, Zen. Uh, any amount of namespaces, and then finally ending up in the class space. So for example, you can have foo. Foo will actually be the actual vendor name. And you can have as many subspaces as you have in the middle and ending up with the class name. OK, each namespace separator is converted to a directory separator. This is a PHP constant. So in Windows, you have your, uh, you have your backslash, which is like this backslash because it's leaning back, and units and mac is a, a forward slash. And in the class name, the part that is at the end of the namespace, the class name, the name of the class, every underscore letter is converted to a directory separator. Okay, it has no special meaning. Okay, because uh, this underscore was uh, something brought over from 5.2 where they didn't have uh, namespaces yet, so they came up with their own way to enforce a namespace. And finally, the fully qualified namespace and class is surfaced with .php when loading from the file system. So I have a full slash bar. Okay, I'll say, okay, I suppose to load full slash bar dot .php. You can have any combination of alphabetic characters, can be lowercase or uppercase. So for some, some examples, in those who use Doctrine, uh, it's a library for uh, database uh, uh, ORM. If you use a class slash doctrine slash common slash isolated class loader, okay, they will load the following. They'll find the correct project library, and then the rest is the same. But you convert the backslash to a forward slash and append .php to it. Same thing for a symphony library. For the Zen ACL as well. Now, just now I refer to the underscore. So class name, your class name has an underscore. So your auto loader, when it looks for it, okay, if I'm going to comply with this standard, it should be loading class slash name dot php. There is a very subtle difference, which you'll find out later. This only applies to the class name, not the package name, not the things in between. So we find that for package name, package underscore name, it is still retained. Only the only underscores in the class name are converted. OK, so um, we are going to do a shop lab practice. I will be asking you to download a zip file. You can open it up. And uh, the result is supposed to you will get a file like this. <coughs> okay, later on when you download the zip file, you'll find that uh, there's quite a few quite a few files here. These are index.php. 
Okay, let me see. Okay, you'll find a few files over here. <coughs> this will be the results of our index PHP, and when I run it, when I run it, so basically, you will write autoload.php. You'll write. After that, I will try to call a few classes which uh, have been included in the folders, <coughs> and I'll just see whether you are able to load the file. This has to let you have a practice. Okay, let's say if I were to run this. Oh. Oops. That is the ah. Let me see if I can bring my mouse over. Okay. So later on, when you run your, after you finish writing the autoload.php, when you just call it, you run the page, uh, index.php, you should be getting these four answers. So that means it shows that you are able to load the file. Is it bigger? Can you see? Okay, okay just four simple lines. Okay. So this will be the contents of autoload.php. Basically, you write, you are given a class name. Let's say foo. So you must uh, uh, resolve it to foo dot. PHP. If I give you full slash bar, okay, what would be the correct name to load? Okay, uh, you can download the file from here, bit.ly slash zn dash psr0. Why is my mouse not on? Oh. <coughs> We will allocate about 10 to 15 minutes. Don't worry if you are not able to finish it on time. Most importantly, is uh, this workshop is for you to actually appreciate what PSR is. Um, right now, you have a lot of boot camps. You see that a lot of uh, people, a lot of students start with high level frameworks, but they don't know what is happening at the bottom. PSR actually enables, as uh, what Aru has mentioned just now, to actually enable frameworks to work together, you can mix and match, all because of PSR. They're all adhering to these standards. So it allows us to actually cooperate well with one another. It's all well to use frameworks for rapid development, but when problem hits the fan, you need to know your basics and what's happening. <coughs> okay. The first three, uh, the first three examples will quite load quite easily. The last one is a bit tricky. Just remember what I mentioned about the package name and the class name.
for those who are running uh, Apache or XAM or MEMP, you can just run it from our browser. For those who have PHP 5.4 and above, you can just run this from the command line. Uh, <coughs> in the same directory where you downloaded the file. So after that, you can just go to localhost colon a zero a zero, and the file will run as per normal. It's a capital S, huh? Do we have elephants? Is there? There is his own. <laughs> PHP uh, hyphen capital S capital S, uh, space localhost colon a zero a zero and then, then you uh, call your browser.
Okay, Aru over here has uh, gotten the first three outputs already. Uh, anyone else has gotten the first three outputs? This one, right? Uh, you are just replacing the slash and the underscore. But in order to cater for the fourth one, right, you actually need to differentiate which is the namespace portion and the class name portion. In the class portion, you can replace. Yes, only class portion can replace. Okay, so um, those who have gotten the first three outputs, most likely you just you just did a simple replace of the slash and the underscore for your whole class name. But in order to cater for the fourth output, okay, to get the fourth output correct, you need to differentiate actually which is the namespace portion, namespace plus sub namespace, and which is the actual class name. Only underscores in the actual class name should be changed to your directory separator. Your, those in your sub name space, your package name should not be touched. You will just give a minute or so uh, before I so-called reveal the answer. Actually, the answer is on the PSR website. Um, now, with this auto-loading standard, what it enables is Zen Framework can write the libraries, can write the classes, Symfony Framework can write the classes, you can come up with your own mini framework. So as long as you comply with this, one person just need to write one, one auto-loader once. So let's say I write my own auto-loader. And this autoloader complies with PSR0. I know that Zen Framework, Laravel Framework, Symfony Framework, KPHP, Coordinator, they comply, they write the classes to be compatible with PSR0. So my autoloader will be able to autoload all of the classes. So I like this particular class in Symfony, I pick. I like this particular class in uh, Zen Framework, probably authentication, I pick. 
I like this particular class in Doctrine OM, I pick. So my autoloader, which I wrote myself according to the rules over here, will be able to autoload load all of them and include the files in my project. So that is a very important step. This allows us to mix and match. Okay. Uh, I will show the answer now. Uh, oh, yes. Okay, let's see. Okay. <laughs> okay, so first thing, uh, this is your stop. I did not mention this. Uh, usually, sometimes class names, right, for absolute uh, fully qualified uh, namespaces, they put a slash in front. Okay, but this one we want to ignore, so we just trim it off. So, as I said, we need to differentiate between the namespace and the actual class name. So over here, first, we find that if there's a, we look for the last slash, last slash in the class name, and we split it up. So supposing, let's say, if you have, a, if you have full slash bar, So you find that full becomes the namespace and bar becomes the class name. If I have full bus bus, the full slash bar becomes a namespace and bus becomes the class name. And over here, what I did was the file name, okay, basically only underscores in the class name are uh, converted to slash, the three separator. The namespace is not touched. So if you run this, you find that the last example, which loads, uh, let me see, which loads full slash my package underscore name slash my class underscore name. This should be retained. This will be converted to a slash, the three separator, and dot PHP. So it becomes a, uh, inside vendor slash full slash my package underscore name slash my class slash name dot php okay okay with that let me go on to psl1 basic coding standards Okay, this is a workshop, two and a half hours workshop. There is not enough time to let everyone have half an hour on try. So I try to keep the lab practices a bit of hands on, but enough for you to get a feel of it. Most importantly is to pick up your interest. So after this workshop, if you forget everything, you forget my face, it's okay. As long as you're interested to go back to find out more about PSR and even better, contribute to PSR. We will have a speaker uh, from Symphony Framework if I'm not wrong, he is uh, currently the secretary of PSR. So I'm looking forward to his talk. I hope you are too. So meta names, the one of the most hardest thing in programming is naming. So uh, how would you name a uh, full bar? Would you name it a uh, fully lowercase, uh, full underscore bar? WordPress lets us do this. Uh, uh, this is what we call camera case because the capital B there's a hum there, so it's uh, called camera case. Uh, st um, se sentence case or uh, style, uh, full bar, which is uh, what we call st sturdily caps or Pascal case. Those who use Turbo Pascal before, or uh, even better, everything caps. I know your GitHub handle is all capital, right? Yeah. So ima imagine standards are not high and fast. You can change them as long as you are consistent. Like for WordPress, WordPress doesn't use PSR, which is fine, I like WordPress. Uh, I use WordPress uh, myself. Um, their coding style is everything, all the meta names will have an underscore, which is fine, as long as it's consistent everywhere. Please don't have something of uh, each, each example over here. So imagine a company's code base with no naming conventions, which is quite, quite easy. Uh, you have a uh, turnover every year. Every year, your developers leave, new developers come. So if there are no naming conventions defined, it's going to be chaos. So um, we just go through a few things. For PSR1, 
first must always use angle bracket question mark PHP or angle bracket question mark equals. Now, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, when I tried it 16 years ago, there was a possibility where you could use uh, angle bracket percentage. Uh, you could inter use it with uh, a dot .esp files also, not your ASP.NET, the old, old ASP. So yeah, mm, files must only use UTF-8 without BOM for PHP code. BOM is basically byte order mark. Okay, it is a Unicode character put at the start to indicate the, the ambient, the type of encoding. This is more applicable to, let's say, UTF-16, where it will matter more. But for UTF-8, it doesn't really matter. Now, omitting the bomb allows older applications, those text editors that don't support, they are not Unicode aware, like Windows Notepad. Yeah. Uh, you will allow them to be able to read your PHP code. At least you can see the words. Um, Funds should either, either declare symbols or cause effects, but should not. Should not do both. Should not is recommended. It's not compulsory. So let's see if I'm just writing, writing a small test script. Like, I just want to write for fun, right? Uh, I can mix and match. I won't uh, be fine or the com PSL committee coming up. Should not miss, recommended not to. But if you really have no choice, yes, probably. So uh, example over here, I hope this, uh, can the back see this? No. Yeah, in front. <laughs> okay, um, now this is an example to avoid. Any set, <gasps> you are changing your any settings. This is a side effect. Include a file. It loads a file. This is a side effect. Uh, echo HTML, echo output. This is generating output. This is a side effect. Now, now I come out, uh, I create a method called foo. This is called a declaration. So this is an example to avoid. You should not mix the two together. Okay, either you have a file purely for declaring a class or functions, and then you have another file for executing your code. Now, namespaces and classes must follow an auto-loading standard PSR. PSR 0 or PSR 4. I will talk about four later. This means that, um, yeah. So the to uh, what call that? So PSL one actually builds on top of PSL zero. Class names must be declared in studly caps. That means start with a capital letter, and every subsequent word will start with a capital letter. Now, code written for PHP 5.3 later, uh, which you shouldn't be using, you should be going on 7 already, uh, should be using namespace, proper namespaces, which is like vendor slash model. If you are unfortunate to actually uh, inherit legacy code, um, you will find that underscore is frequently used as the uh, namespace uh, se separator. Class constants must be declared all uppercase with underscore character. So supposing uh, you can have, uh, uh, you can turn the camera, no need, no need. <laughs> okay, all capital letters. Method names must be declared camel case, camel case, not Studly caps, camel case with a hum. Okay, this is a example. Okay, so for example, if you have a word date approved, you can separate the words with an underscore, but it must be in all caps. And this will be how you write your method name, starting with small letters, and every subsequent word will have a capital letter. And that's all for PSR1. Very short, right? Four slides, right? So what's the catch? The catch is PSR2. Hey, that was coding standard, this coding style. Everyone has a different style. Okay, um, it extends PSR1, it builds on top of it. There was a lot, a lot of opinions. Uh, 22, there were 22 voting members, so everyone had to vote. And there are also survey results available. It tell you what went on, who disagreed on what, who agreed on what. 
I will show you the survey results later. Now, this example encompasses some of the rules as a quick overview. Instead of me talking, so uh, why not we go one round and guess the guess the rules? Now, you first. <laughs> okay, uh, guess uh, guess a PSR two uh, rule that uh, using this as an example. Uh, four, because spa four spaces. Four spaces. Oh, okay, very good. Um, okay, it's still my show already. Uh, four spaces. It's not very, it's not very obvious here. So for indentation, four spaces. Now, some people like to use tabs. Some people like to use two spaces. When I started programming in C, uh, I used three spaces. I can't remember why. The thing is, uh, a lot of these projects, they use uh, version control. They commit to GitHub, uh, SVN. Uh, the thing is, if you use tabs, everyone's editor may use a, a different width, but space is always a space. So for example, for Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word default text spacing is 1.25 cm or 1 inch. I use 1 cm. He use, he doesn't use Microsoft Word. Okay, some people may use 2 cm. So everyone have different standards, but a space is always exactly a space. And it helps to uh, say, okay, everyone use spaces, so you don't pollute your git diff, your diff history. Okay. How about you, my dear friend? <laughs> Uh, would you like to guess? Uh, why not we guess from this line? Probably it will be easier. Uh, could you think of a rule? <laughs> could you think of a PSL2 rule that will affect the coding style for this line? And yes, you can of course uh, refer to the PSL2 website. <laughs> <laughs> Is that uh, recommended? But I think it's not compuls not compulsory. I think not compulsory. No, 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 actually no. Okay, uh, Mr. Justin, uh, curly bracket. Next line. Now this is for classes and methods. Okay, some people they like to put the curly bra brace on the same line. But after a big vote, see, okay, no, okay, we standardize curly <coughs> braces, next line for class and for methods. Anyone else? There should be a space if, if we start curly braces in if. Ah, okay, very good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You are talking about this space here, right? Yes. Yes, correct, okay? Very good. Some people, they don't like to put a space. Some people like to put a space. So they say all standardized. Why standardized? Because we want to improve the employability of PHP developers. You go into a new company and they say, can you please uh, look at this legacy code? Say, Wow, no standard or the spaces are all over the place. So right now we are making life easier for everyone. So that when we switch jobs, right? We do switch jobs, right? Okay, it'll be easier for us. Okay, another thing is uh okay, so going back to my friend, this first line. Very simple question. Extend first or implement first? Who say extend first? Hands up. Who say implements first? Who say it doesn't matter? Okay, anyone can tell me, no, you, you answer it. <laughs> anyone can tell me why it stands first. Is there any particular reason or just because uh, it's because of the people voting? You can implement multiple. Ah, yes, very good. <laughs> because in PHP, uh, I'm not very familiar with the other languages. For PHP, it's a single inheritance model, you can only have one parent. So you can only have full extends bar. You cannot say full extends bar and coulds. Don't have. So yeah, implement, you can implement multiple interfaces. Now, uh, how about, whoa, oops. 
Oh. Wait, ah? Uh? Answer. Answer. No. <laughs> Thanks so all the answer already. No, that's not the answer. That is, uh, that is the, that, those are the survey results. Visibility. OK, how about this? Uh, it goes now. So basically, you are giving a default value. So in this uh, case, right, B is actually optional. When I call sample function, I can just pass in one function, or uh, one argument. I do not need to always pass in two. So any idea why I highlighted this? Ah, optionals are always at the end. Hey, come on, don't always let me answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought you're supposed to be hosting the next room. <laughs> okay, um, okay, let's uh, how about. Hey, it's okay, it's okay, you can stay. <laughs> visibility. visibility. Okay, visibility. Uh, our dear video recorder here. Uh, visibility. Final, public, static. Can it be public, static, final, or uh, static, public, final? So which one, which one first? Final always comes first. OK, final. That's another one called abstract. So abstract and final always comes first, followed by your visibility, then followed by static. Okay, let us look at this. Who was the one who mentioned about the space just now? Or different, right? Okay, the space also applies to this. Okay, let me. So we even the space inside these brackets is important. No space. After the opening bracket, no space before the opening bracket. Okay, it's like, like teaching you how to write your English composition. Uh, during my time, it's uh, two finger spacing, then you start your paragraph. Everything must be exact. Uh, no such thing. Uh, space between operators. If you are calling a method, No, some things they like to be uh, some things they like to be explicit. Okay, one space after the comma. No space before the comma. But you'll be surprised, though. Uh, you see a lot of code where there's many many changes, and some people like to do this. So they said, okay, let's make our lives easier. We are always looking at screens at uh, two a.m. in the middle of the morning. So let's not make our life harder. So in this case, we are, all, we are standardizing the coding style. Everyone will write the roughly the same way. OK. Now, OK, the thing that I lost you just now, <laughs> these are the survey results. Now, basically, there were 22 voters, seven sections, about 20 rules over here. The, um, so all this come from uh, the 22 voters. So for example, the first one, indent underscore type. What kind of indentation do you want to use? So seven people say tabs. One person say two spaces. And then four people say, hey, sorry, 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 sorry. OK, sorry. <laughs> one person say two spaces. 14 people say four spaces. So who won? Majority win. So, now we have four spaces for indentation. The next one, line, length, limit, soft. Um, they are saying that you are recommended to keep your lines within how many characters? Recommended. So same thing, don't know. They cannot make up the mind, two people. Uh, don't want any limit, three people. 75, four people. And then the winner was six people. Yeah, <laughs> just a simple ma uh, majority chose 80 characters. So you are recommended, recommended, not compulsory, recommended to keep your lines within 80 characters. Hard limit. No hard limit. <coughs> Although in the PSL2, they would recommend that uh, you keep it within 
most frameworks like Zen framework, they will say try, just try, try to keep your code within 120 characters. It's easier to read. Uh, but like if you have comments, your comments spend more than 120 is fine, but the actual PHP code. Class name. Don't know. I, uh, I don't know who's this person who don't know. Lower case, uh, snake case. And finally, uh, overwhelming majority use studly case. That means uh, Pascal case. Start with a capital letter. Every subsequent word, use a capital letter. Class brace line. Next line, 16 people. Same line, 6 people. Constants. Whoa. They had no, no uh, different opinions. Now, true, false now. Lower 19, upper 3. So what is this uh, talking about basically is do you type it like this or do you type it like this? Standardized or small letters. Metonyms, camera case. Method brace line, should a curly brace for the method be on the same line or on the next line? Control, control statements, your if else statement, your for loop statement, your while statement, your do while statement, uh, <coughs> same line. Okay, uh, I struggled with this uh, personally for a very long time because uh, I, I, I learned, I learned Pascal when I was in JC. So we always had, uh, you have your begin and your end. So I was very used to having uh, my so-called opening base on the next line. So it took me very long, very long, uh, to uh, a very big struggle for me to actually finally shoot you to the same line. Okay, so it's recommended. Okay, but it's not hard and fast. So not everyone will agree, but if you want to comply, you will have to follow the standard. Always use control braces. Okay, what is this talking about? What if you have only one line? I used to do this a lot. Hey. <laughs> Okay, if I only have one line, one statement line, I wouldn't care. Uh, never mind, it's just one line. What? Okay, but they say that uh, to avoid accident, avoid accident, make it clear. Okay, so everything must always be, you must always use a curly brace. Okay, no, no qualms about that. If, else, else if. Next line or the same line? Same line. Same line as in what? As the uh, closing brace, actually. So you have, instead of doing this, okay, you have this. Same line. So this is what they mean by same line, not the, not the next line. Case and then, uh, when you have a case switch statement, uh, how many indents, how many levels of indents, not how many spaces are, how many le level indents. We, we already established that one level indent is four spaces. So we're saying that um, you have your switch statement. <coughs> okay, you have a switch statement and uh, your case should be one level in then, and then your subsequent, your subsequent uh, statements here should be two level in then from the switch. Function space after, do one. Okay, do, do they need a function space, uh, space after I think when you call a method, do you actually do this? Okay, so they say no, the one when you call a method, when I call it a method, no need space. Okay, closing PHP tag required. Basically, if your file only contains PHP code, do you close the PHP tag? You don't. This is so that when you include the file, you don't uh, accidentally include a blank line, especially when you are using it for, let's say, for HTML output. 
Um, blank line after PHP, if yours is a pure PHP file, there should be a blank line as the last line. And just now what our uh, video recorder is talking about, static of visibility first. And line and this. Now, uh, I think predominantly most of them are working on Linux, Ubuntu, Mac. So basically, they choose Unix uh, endings. So this is not very obvious. Um, so your line and this is basically referring to this. For Windows, it's slash R, slash N. But for Unix, basically, it's just slash N. So basically, you say that all your line endings, when you type your file, it should end with a slash N, not a slash R, slash N. You can read more on the survey legend. Now, this is the lab practice. <laughs> okay. Um, please download this file at bit.ly slash zn hyphen psr2. Basically, you are going to have a file check. Given a PHP file, check that it complies with psr2. For each error, I'll put a line number and simple error message. You can use the short codes in the survey results. Uh, let me show you a sample. When you download the file, it will look like this. I've done a sign example for you. And don't worry, please don't do all of the PS2 rules. Pick and choose. Uh, so basically, this is where I do it. Now, you can use a tokenizer. This is just a simple lab practice. So we do it a simple and basic way. We will read each line. Okay. So I'll read the file name into a line. Uh, I'll go through the lines. I get a line number. I get a trim line. So for example, how do I check for tabs? I'll just check. Are there tabs in the line? Yes. Then I'll output the line number. Say, OK, at line 5, tabs are not allowed, but you use tabs. So how do I detect uh, if the line contains an if statement? So after I trim the line, I trim all the beginning spaces, I'll check. If I can see an if, so that means uh, it's an if statement. So what are the things, PSR rules, that I need to check for PSR, check for if statement, let's say like the curly brace. I need to check whether there's a curly brace. If don't have, most likely it's on the next line. Okay. Um, and when you run it, okay, let's see. Oops. Okay, initially when you run it, uh, these are the results. Line 26, tabs found. It's not very obvious. Okay. Uh, line 30 and line 37. Now, to make it simpler, uh, because we don't have uh, five hours to do this, we are going to pick and choose. At first, I was thinking probably this column over here, you can pick, use, pick and choose from here. This column over here, you pick from the second column. And then the group of friends sitting just in front of the window that might break down any time, you can pick the other <laughs> column. Okay. So uh, let me write down the link again. It's bit.ly slash zn hyphen psr2. Okay, we'll do this for about 10 to 15 minutes. Our speaker just now in the morning, he talked about code linking. So this will give you experience on uh, actually, yeah, it's very nice for us to use, right? But actually, it's not that nice to write. So you give you a sense like, OK, how difficult or how easy it is to write a code linter.
if anyone has any problems understanding uh, what this particular legend means, uh, there's a link there. You can go to the that's a PHP hyphen uh, FIG website uh, where you can read out on PSL2. Uh, I've deliberately only shown the survey results, not the full line of rules that will, that will take us until tomorrow. So if I start at 45, 5 minutes. Stopping at 4, right? Can you do it early if you want? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. The last, the last one is uh, the last one is a bit long.
Okay, hold on. Uh, everyone's not dying of boredom yet. Um, the, so right now, so how's your experience writing your so-called your own code linter? Especially since there are so many rules. If you have only chosen one or two rules, uh, you probably like, take five minutes really. If you want a more extensive one, you need to look up for edge cases. So there are people, and uh, PSR has been this has been around for some time already, uh, since it started in 2009. There are some people who have already written code linters out there. So some of the, I'm going to show you an example of one um, and how to actually integrate it with your, let's say your GitHub project. How to automatically check it instead of you manually doing it. So I using Windows, okay? I'm not using, I use, not using a Mac. There is, uh, there is a PHP code sniffer. I will show you the link later. Basically, it is just one file, a PHP archive file phpcs.far. So what I can do is I can actually run it on my PHP file or a directory and it will show me all the LinkedIn problems, all the code problems. So right now, I will try to do this. PHP Okay, let me see if I can Okay, uh, I found 44 errors. So just a very simple command line, command line, PHP, I run the uh, PHP archive file and I pass in the file name. And it found 31 errors and one warning affecting like 19 lines. So line number one, error, end of line character is invalid. Expected, uh, expected uh, line fit, but found a uh, carriage return and a line fit. Now to make it easier, I've exported it to a uh, to a file. Let's see. Um, okay, where is it? Oh, okay, this is quite bad. Okay, sorry for the... Uh... <coughs> yeah, wait on.
Yeah, no, but uh, not having it. OK, let's just try one. Uh, so actually, for line one, which is over here, actually, I have inserted, I use Windows Notepad okay, to type out this file. So actually, there was a, there is a slash r slash n over here. OK, let's look at, uh, let's look at, Line three, opening brace of a class must be on the line. OK? Wrong. This is the error. So actually, by right, this should be on the next line. OK? Uh, line number four, class constants must be uppercase, expected pi. They even spell up the correct spelling for you. So in this case, right, in sample.bhp, which is the file that we were supposed to check, it's supposed to be capital PI, not small letter PI. Now, uh, line 14. 15. Yeah, 14. Eh? Line indented incorrectly, expected at least 12 indentations. So why? Because this is one level for it, the k statement is supposed to be one level indentation from the switch statement. So it's supposed to be like this. And then your subsequent lines, like this. So they are checking for this indentation. Let's look at line 25. They will tell you, sorry, no fly. You are supposed to name it as bus coots, not bus small uh, small case underscore coots. So uh, let's look at some more. Line 34. There must be a single space between the closing parentheses and the opening brace of a multi-line if statement. Line 34. There shouldn't be a space here. There shouldn't be a space here. And the opening base should be here. OK, let's look at one last one. Line 42. Expected closing brace, else opening brace, slash n, but found closing brace, slash n, blah, 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 else, slash n. So basically what it means is your else statement is supposed to be on the same line with a space. OK. Let me show you. Uh, OK. Sensual Labs, which is the company that came out with Symfony Framework, they have a PHP coding standards fixer. But what it does is actually it will fix it for you. But it doesn't really show you the errors, which uh, I find a bit iffy. So the other popular one is PHP Code Sniffer. Um, it's by Squeeze Labs. You can just uh, Google for PHP code sniffer. You'll be able to find it. OK, let me go back to the. Now, next one is how to integrate Travis CI for GitHub repository. I'm going to show you an example from my own repository. Uh, Okay, uh, I present framework two module. So you find that we like pictures, right? So I'll, every time I commit, every time I commit my code to GitHub, they will actually run an auto check with uh, Travis CI. This is a uh, continuous integration website called Travis. So they will actually pass it, and then uh, I'll be able to get a status whether my build fail, there's something wrong, or uh, whether it's passing. This Travis CI can help me to run a code linting as well as my unit test. So example, let me show you. It is an 
encapsulated in this file called Travis YML. Okay, in this case, uh, PHP, I think uh, this is supposed to be compatible with uh, what? This uh, which PP version. I wrote this about 2012. Uh, I haven't really updated since. So before install, I will download the CS fixer from Sensio Labs. And then uh, I will run Composer. And then I will run my unit test. And I will actually run the script. It's just a terminal command. Verbose, dry run, don't fix. It's just a dry run, that means don't fix. Tell me if there's errors, but don't fix it, please. I don't want anyone to anyhow commit to my GitHub repo. So level is how much? PSR 2. Uh, let's look at the uh, Travis website. Yes. Okay, so Travis CI basically you give permissions to uh, keep checking your 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 GitHub repository. Once it every time it detects that you have committed something, there's some there's a there's a commit. So you pull the latest changes and then you run through everything that's in the Travis .yml. So in this case, uh, everyone is doing it here. Uh, so they actually run a terminal command. They have their own worker to run through a unit test and your code linting. So this is one way your uh, code linting works. So all the major frameworks, they do that as well. Zen framework, Symfony framework, Laravel, they also have something like Travis.yml. Some people use Jenkins. Um, yeah. And with that, we go to PSR 4 which is another auto-loading standard. Now, um, PSL0 is actually deprecated, uh, kind of. Uh, you can still use PSL0, but for new projects, uh, you are encouraged to go on to PSL4. So this is an extension. Now, uh, everyone uses Composer here. It's something like a package manager. So I say, I want to use uh, his library. I want to use a uh, component for Zen, uh, Zen framework. I want to use a component for Laravel framework. So instead of me downloading the files, uh, the zip files from GitHub, and then I unzip, then I copy the code over, I'll just use Composer. I define in the composer.json. Let me show you an uh, example. Oops. Uh, Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, yes. Okay, this is a typical composer.json file. So basically, here I'll just say that okay, what are my authors? What are my requirements? I'll check do I have the required PHP uh, um, versions? And you just download this from the packages or from uh, GitHub. So in this case, uh, I need a component for Zen framework, which is Zen Expressive for Zen standard library. For development purposes, I need to download PHP unit. So when you download a, a new project, they have a composer.json, you they don't commit the dependencies to GitHub or to Bitbucket or to GitLab, or whichever version control that you use. They only commit this file. So you download, you type Composer install, you just pull everything from everywhere, and then they'll maintain the dependencies for you. Now over here, you see auto load. For the older projects and frameworks, right, you'll find PSR-0. Nowadays, the new ones, they start using PSR-4. You'll say that, okay, this module, this module, if I ask for app namespace, where do I look for it? Which is the directory that I start looking for in? So in this case, source slash app. OK. 
qui l'aime ici. <coughs> so now, why bother? PSL0 is basically based on hot or pair convention under the constraints of PHP 5.2 uh, previous. The pair installer move source files from pair packages into one central location. Okay, one folder. With composer, doesn't matter. Your packages, probably you have two projects. And then your Zen library is in a folder by itself. So instead of having duplicates, one Zen library for this project, a duplicate Zen library for this uh, project, you only have one location and then you can call it from there. So probably you have Symfony in C drive. Zen framework, the component in D drive. The uh, component for Drupal is in E drive. So instead of copying them into one central location, now with Composer, you can actually specify different locations where your library, your dependencies are held. Okay, there's more on the PHP uh, fig website on this. So this will be a sample example of PSL0. If your project is using PSL0, this is an example of how your packages and how your files will be laid out in the directory. You will see a vendor directory. Your vendor name, let's say Zen, Microsoft, or AWS. Package name, let's say ACL, and then a source directory where you have all the source code files. Then you find, eh? Duplicate again. This is the actual namespace, the vendor name. So you find here you have a Microsoft. This doesn't matter. This is just a naming. But over here you have eh, Microsoft again. Then you have the same ACL again. Then you have a class name. This is PSR0. And your test will be in a different directory. Now with PSR4, basically you are trying to compare the directory structure. So you can just do this. Vendor, vendor name probably Zen. ACL. So you find that the new structure is flatter. So give an example. So in this case, your libraries can be in different directories. So Acme, Acme is the uh, Looney Tunes company, right? Yeah. Hey, Acme. The base directory is uh, admi log writer, Aura framework, Aura DI framework. They are in the Aura web folder, separate folder. You are not even in the same vendor directory. Symfony, I want to uh, use a request for Symfony framework. It's inside vendor. And for Zen ACL, I put it under slash user slash includes uh, vendor. Now with all these four locations, because of Composer, I still can bring them together and still use them. And because of PSR4, okay, you make my life easier, so I can actually have more variation, more flexibility with my paths. <coughs> and <laughs> this is the uh, no lab, no lab, okay, because the lab is reserved for this. This will be a longer lab. This is the. Uh, <coughs> There are about 19 PSR right now. About, about eight or nine of them uh, have been approved. So I'm not covering all of them, obviously. So, uh, but this is, to me, one of the most exciting ones. PSR 7, HTTP message interface. This is the most exciting PSR, the future of PHP. And this is not what I said. Credits to talk by Matthew Wilfini. He is the lead developer of uh, Zen Framework in Zen Technologies. So I'll just show you. This is his slides. Okay, he's the one who said this, the future of PHP. Okay, he's the one who spearheaded this PSR. Okay, now, the, a simple procedural script uh, example of how I will read in a city variable via my query string. And then I will just check it. First one, test.php, question mark, city equals to sg. So I'll just check a submit button. Under the city, I will get it from the super global get. I have a post form. 
That's it. Now, in a framework, let's say Zen framework, Symphony, Lara, probably this would be how you do it. You have a test controller extending the abstract action controller, some controller class specific proprietary to the framework. And then you call the initial action, you get a request, and then you check whether it's post. If not, if yes, then you get the uh, variable my text from post. And instead of outputting the HTML, you return it to a view model, a view renderer, a template engine. You just pass the parameters like this. Even the form itself, you will just you have a class for that, and the form will render itself. So now the problem is many ways of doing it, this, and the code cannot be reused. The second example. Different frameworks, different way of doing this. This is uh, from Zen framework. Laravel, Symfony will have a different way of doing this. Now, can you see a similarity? All of them re receive a request, <coughs> process a request, and then return a response. Now, why bother? Okay, the thing is, okay, these are all the major frameworks out there. With PSR 7, PSR 6 caching, and the upcoming PSR 11 container editor op, the aim is to subvert and to remove the need of frameworks. In the future, I'm not going to say, I'm a Zen framework developer. You have a symphony, or oh, let's start throwing bombs. No, we are all PHP developers. We're all abanban. OK, we're all friends. <laughs> okay? Every framework comes up with their own abstractions of HTTP. OK, the thing is, uh, every time, you switch to a framework. Uh, I use Zen framework mostly. If I were to switch to Laravel or Symfony or Cake or Codeigniter, I need to relearn what are the how to receive a request, how to return a response, so I cannot switch easily. So uh, usually, what do they extract? From post, how to access your super global server variables, how to extract the request URI for routing purposes. If I go to slash city, which controller do I call? How do I handle file uploads? How do I handle input and output streams? And the returning of response. OK, some basics. PHP was designed for the web. So it helps to know a little bit of basics. So basically, this is what happening on your internet every day when you uh, uh, look to your browser and uh, serve some website. A client, which is your computer, you send a request to the server halfway across the group, and then the server will process it and return you a response. A more detailed one, um, basically a request is the one in red color, and the green one is the response in uh, HTTP response. The request as a verb, get, post, patch, put, delete. What do I want? The slash, let's say for this post, slash login. Slash login is the request URI. What is the path that I want? HTTP slash 1.1 is the protocol. HTTP 2 is coming up. Uh, currently, we are still using 1.1. Hopefully, it will come out soon. And the response by the server is, which HTTP protocol version am I using? The number over here, 401, is the status code. It's already predefined. And the word unauthorized is already a standardized uh, response phrase. So 401 basically means unauthorized, right? Yeah, 403 is forbidden. Every request has a specific form. If you are uh, doing, let's say, a uh, terminal, just pure uh, terminal, this uh, will be how you look like. The verb, the path, the protocol version, host, which uh, server to call, and the body. Response also. First line, the protocol version, status code, and the reason phrase, what's our content, the headers, and then the response body. This is a big overview of PSR7. 
Now, PSL is basically a recommendation. They are not going to tell you how are you going to pull the request. They will tell you interfaces. I don't care how you do it. Just make sure that you have a get name method. I don't care how you do it. Okay, so we are trying to standardize so that whether you go to Symfony framework, Zen framework, Laravel framework, every time you have a request object, you can be certain that you have a get name method, for example. You don't need to find out do it through documentation. Uh, so Symfony request uh, is a get request name method. Then uh, Zen framework is a get request my name method. No need. You just need to know get name. So they actually recommend interfaces. So every box here represents an interface proposed by PSR7. The green color line is extend. Orange color line is users. So basically, uh, message uses a stream. A stream can be a file. An uploader file uses a stream. A request and response basically is an extension of a message. So they share a lot of common commonalities, like header line, Request body, response body. Uh, request uses a URI, which is not so simple as just one line, example.com slash test. There's many parts of a URI which we'll find out later. And one part that's very important is uh, server request. PHP stores has a lot of uh, super globals. Your super global server, get, post, how to handle all this, how to handle routing. So they came up with a server request interface that extends request interface. Okay, we go through one by one. <coughs> message interface. Every message will basically comprise of headers. Let's say like your uh, cookie, your accept header, content type, your request saying that the data I'm sending you is in JSON. So I'll have a content type application slash JSON header. My response, when I come back, I can tell you I return you text slash HTML. So um, headers return an array indexed by the header name. Header values is for a single header. Header line is to get the header as a string. The body, message get body, which will return you a stream interface. Uh, now, one thing very important is the concept of value objects or immutability. Okay, in PHP, objects are passed by reference, and uh, if you are not careful, you may be passing the same object, and then you do some changes here, right? Somewhere down there, deep down, fifteen levels down the code, right? And then you find that we come back, eh? Something changed, and you are not quite sure why. So certain things, so they have done it so that. They have these with methods. If you call a message with header, it returns you a new message instance. You can go and play around with what you like. It will not affect the original message. So that's why I specifically name this new message and message. If I, and if I were to use a with body, I change the body content, you will return me a new object. So you can be certain that you will not modify or touch the original object accidentally, especially for frameworks where you pass your request and response all over the place. Next, request interface. Uh, so for request interface, you have a get method. You need to check whether uh, it's get or post. Uh, URI, I'll touch on that later. So basically, uh, are you asking for example.com slash test or example.com slash Fuba. And for body, you have a new stream. A stream can be a file. Okay, it's an abstraction. So you can write this is my JSON file. And how will I compose a new request? I take the current request with method, it gives me a new instance. With URI, another new instance. With fader, another instance, and with body. So finally, new request will be a different object from request. Next, response. What does a response have? Get status code. Request to a status code. Response have. So for response, you have your get status code. 
your reason phase and your get body. Get body gives you a stream in the phase. It gives you a stream. So they do mandate that you are supposed to implement the to string magic method. Underscore, underscore, to string. Okay. And this is how I will create a new response with a body and with a status. Server request in the face. This will give you your dollar underscore get. Your pass body. Pass body basically they will process your raw body string and then probably they will return you an array or, uh, or a JSON, JSON or decoded string. Get uploaded files for the request. And how, how about when you pass parameters via the uh, request URL, like just now we put test.php slash city equals to sg. This is particular, this is why we have a server request interface. The framework implementation details, uh, so they don't tell you how to implement it. The framework will actually pass the URL, get the request parameters, and pass, inject it into the request. <coughs> as a request attribute. So just now I have, uh, if I pass in the user ID, test.php slash id slash 5, they will inject it into the request as an id attribute, which has a value of 5. Stream interface, this is how it looks like. It's uh, like a file pointer, you can stick to a particular cursor, you can rewind, you can write, you can read, get the contents, uh, find, check whether it's an uh, end of file. Okay, this is uh, important because they're thinking that there may be some instances where you may not download the whole body of the request at one go. Let's say for uploaded files or let's say if you're streaming some data. So they decided to make it a stream and extract it out. Now, something interesting. Who has worked with files before? Playing files, the dollar underscore files. Can anyone tell me, is this correct? Let's say I perform, I upload some files, and I dump the contents of the files super global. Is this correct? No. OK, supposing I say I upload two, two files. One is a text file, one is an HTML file. Looks very nice, right? First file is file0.txt, second file is file1.html. Looks very nice, right? This is what we expect to see, right? Set to say, actually, no. This is the actual return that PHP gives us. Okay? Instead of splitting file by file, they go by the property. So the name for the first file is name0. The type for the first file is type 0, so it's totally off. So there was a need to actually extract it out. This is the uploader file interface by, for PSL 7. I will just call get uploader files for request. You return, return me an array, and I'll just do this. There are a few methods. Get client file name. What was the file name? according to what the client up uploaded, the media type, the size, the stream, to get the contents, and a move to method. So this will be the uh, reply. File0.txt, plain, file1.html, html. So it abstracts it out. Okay? You don't need to come and bother say, oh, well, I need to pass this off by myself. It's going to be a bit complicated. I need to hard code a lot of things. So no. So they say, now I have an interface nicely for you. Hopefully, all the major frameworks will actually implement PSL 7. Uh, Zen framework has already started already. So, and then for every PHP developer, you only need to memorize one thing, PSL 7. 
Now, next one, UI interface. What's in a UI? You have a scheme, HTTP, your user interface, uh, information, your host, like example.com, port number, you have a path, you have a query string, key equals value, and you have a fragment. Now, if you want to get this from your server, super global, uh, you can, you can, you can. But uh, it's going to be a lot of uh, manual work for you. So what they say that, okay, instead of every framework doing their own way of getting a URI and splitting their own parts and have their own method names, why not we have a URI interface? So to get the various parts, you just need to remember these methods. Get URI, get scheme, get host, get port, path, query, fragment. And if you need to create a new URI instance, with host. Anything that starts with wave will create a new instance so that you do not accidentally modify the objects. Okay, I show everyone is cause it cause I run right now. Now, so what is uh, so exciting about this? Uh, why is this called the future of PHP? Let's practice. Okay, everyone uh, kindly download the file over here bit.ly slash zen, zen hyphen psr7 and in case you're wondering yes i actually reserve the uh the bit links uh, in advance so it's psr7 when you download this file they actually there's a readme.md inside okay can you read it and uh, you have the instructions on how to proceed the lab practice. Okay, let me see. Huh? Okay. Uh, there won't be a need to run Composer install uh, because actually I've downloaded the packages in front in the zip file, but I can run it uh, as a practice. It will tell you there's nothing to update because of composer.lock. Okay, you can navigate to the public file. So if I were to do this in my browser right now, It will tell me welcome world. And if I were to add a uh, target question mark, target equals to Zion, it will say welcome Zion. Okay? How is it being done? Let me just go through the files with you all. You will find that in the source directory, inside the file, inside the source directory, there are basically only two files. Hello action and welcome action. So this one uses PSR7. Now load, I'm not using any framework. Okay, I'm using a kind of library, but this is a plain old PHP file. I'm not extending anything. There's no special class that I read to extend it. It is only running one method, the invoke magic method, taking three things. <coughs> a request, a response, and the next. Next is basically the next, uh, the next class to pass it to. And I'm only using these two interfaces. So basically, I can use all the methods that I talked about just now. I get the create parameters from the request. I check for target. If not specified, I will default to work. And I will just write, hello, target. And I return a new response to next. OK, the next one will be. So this is middleware. Yes, correct. And welcome action. I re this. One basically kind of overrides hello action. It will actually replace the word hello with 
welcome. Okay. Now, so what are we supposed to do for? Okay. For this lab, same thing. Uh, about fifteen minutes. Add a new class, app slash of action. You have written autoloader already. I show you the hello action and welcome action. You should know where to put the class of action, .php. First thing, check. Is there a query string parameter called secret? And then that the value is equal to today's date. If it fails, then return the response by word. If it passes, it should run as usual. Call uh, welcome, welcome Zion. Add a class to config dot slash config dot php, and then you try this. Where this pass? Okay, the hint is the off action class uses code from hello action and welcome action. Miss and match. Okay, that's a lot of help already. You can find uh, uh, try to see which will actually help me get the query string parameter. So if I were to run the file now, let me see. If I done it correct, I have not passed a secret. So it has tell me by word. But if I were to pass a secret with today's date as per normal. Or if I use a wrong date, I show the end of the month. You tell me by word. So that is the practice, and this is the last lab practice. I promise. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, you can start now. Okay. It's inside the uh, it's inside the uh, uh, readme. Yeah, there's a readme.md. There's a, the the requirements are inside. There's a file also <coughs> uh, config. .php. So you're supposed to know where to put your new off action. Is it on the first line, or in the between? Or on the last line.
to get uh, the query string with uh, get attribute. Mm. It was my problem. It was not working. Mm. Only as a query parameter and Yeah. Okay, wait. I, I don't notice a problem. And uh, Okay, uh, just a small clarification. I just realized there's a problem. Huh? Um, if you provide, okay, if the secret actually fails, right, okay, you are not supposed to use a target or So let me rephrase my, my, my question. If the chat fails, you should return the response by haste. Okay, you should not say by word, you should not say, if I pass by target equals to Zion, you should not say by Zion. You should just simply say, by haste. Okay, this is to avoid any uh, 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 misunderstanding. Um, so basically, your off action right, is will not be reusing your the target per, uh, query string parameter. It will not be reusing. It will not be using the target parameter at all. Uh, by the way, those who are first time to Singapore uh, last year at this time when they had the PHP conference, uh, there was a big haze thanks to our uh, neighbor. So uh, everything was very hazy. So uh, let me reiterate your off action. If the secret fails or is not present, you should say 
by haste. You shouldn't say by were, by Zion, by target, by my, my, uh, my name. You should just say by haste. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, we'll give another one or two minutes. Because there's a tea break, apparently, waiting for us. So instead of starting the next session at 4 o'clock, we'll take a break from 4 to 4.30 as the tea break. And 4.30, the next session will start. Like that, okay. So, okay, also can, also can. No, no, it's supposed to say just by here, so you don't have the hello, hello anymore. Okay. Oh. Ah, so, the final, if if I don't pass in the secret, right, or the secret is wrong, right, you say by his, you will not say hello by his. Oh, Okay, I'm going to show the config file first. Don't worry, not yet. I'll just show the config file first. <coughs> now, this is how I have put it. It's right at the top. Now, uh, I've seen uh, our friend Aru here. He put it at the bottom. It still works. It still works. Now, the thing is, all fashion, Supposedly, if I was writing authentication using login username and password, I want it to be the first guard. First guard. Okay? I, it shouldn't run through all my classes first, then run the authentication. So for authentication purposes, usually I want it to run first. If it doesn't pass right, I'll just cut short my whole circuit. I don't waste my server resources. So for this reason, I put it at the most top. There are two ways of writing it. I can put it as a string. Or uh, in PHP 5.5 and newer, I can just uh, call the class and use the class uh, keyword. Now for the answer. <coughs> okay. So basically, I will get the query parameters from uh, the request. I will get a secret, I'll check. Is there a secret parameter passing? If yes, I'll use it. If not, I'll just give a blank string. Now in PHP 7, which I've been using a lot, uh, this can be replaced with the question mark, question mark, which I, <laughs> which I've been, I admit I've been uh, abusing. So uh, if we cut, you actually be as simple as this. So this is another part of switching to uh, PSP, uh, PHP 7. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> yes. Okay. How? Is it valid now? I'll check whether it's equals, the secret is equals to this string, today's date. 
If it is not valid, I will create a new stream. I'll write by haste and I'll return the response. If not, I'll pass it to the next class to run. That's it, as simple as that. Authentication. Okay, so I'll go through again. I take the create parameters. I'll check it. If the secret does not match, I will create a new response and I'll return it by haste. If not, I'll pass it to the next class, which is hello action to deal with it. And I'll just pass it request and response. Now, so what we did just now is what we call middleware. PSL7 is a list of interfaces. It doesn't look so interesting, but it is exciting for the fact that it enables the concept of middleware. Those people have been using like Gaza, Node.js, they will be familiar with it. So with middleware, it's just a black box. Those who take comp science, those who study bootcamp, you know that we always talk about black box. So middleware is like black box. It will just take in a request, process it, and give a response. That's it. Now, with this middleware, you won't need to worry about Symphony bundles, Zen framework modules, Laravel packages. You just need to know middleware. I just need to create a class like that, and that will work anywhere, whether it's a Symphony framework, or Zen framework, or Laravel framework. Now, how does it actually work? Let me, if you have looked at that's this file public slash in desktop PHP, the file that you run. PSL 0, PSL 4, I call the autoloader so that every time I use a class, you will uh, you just load the file for me. Strategility and Dartros is an uh, implementation of PSL 7. Okay, the Dartros is an uh, implementation of PSL 7. Strategility is the middleware implementation. So I create a pipe. And then for each class in the config, this, uh, this I wrote it up. It's a simple case. It's, of course, there will be more complicated than that in the real life situation. I'll basically add the class to the pipe. So middleware is, hello, I'm the client and the request. I'll pass it down the pipe. Let's say this is the pipe. I'll pass the request and the response object. Objects are passed by reference, right? Request and uh, response object. I'll pass it to the first guy. He process it. He probably inject something to the request, modify it, or inject something to the response, modify it. Then after that, he will pass it to the next guy. Next guy, do do. Mm, okay, I just uh, inject some things. I probably I put in a logger. Probably I check for ACR authorization. Then I pass it to the next guy. The next guy say, okay, Candy, I think this is enough. I'm the I'm the final middleware. So okay, uh, I calculate the secret for you. Then he return back to this person. Then he return back to this person and then comes up back to the client. So this is the concept of middleware. Today, let's say I'm doing uh, hello and welcome. Now I want to add authentication. I just write a middleware authentication. No classes to extend. No classes to extend. Just a simple magic invoke and the same signature. Taking a request, response, next. Either I return the response or I pass it to the next middleware. So uh, tomorrow I want to add authorization. I write an ACR action, I insert it in between. Uh, I want to do some logging. So do I go to every action? Let's say I got 1,000 actions. Do I go to every action type? Uh, logger, call, log, uh, and then this message. Or why not? I have the request and the response ready. Everything is inside. Why not? I just write a middleware called log action and I just insert it in between. You will just log everything and pass the request and response to the next middleware. So this is the this is the exciting part because it removes the need of frameworks. The frameworks are so-called trying to move to this middleware so that uh, you can actually write simple classes that are framework independent. OK, 
Okay, we are focusing right now on PHP. The future of PHP is collaborative. It's cooperating with one another. Not, or I come up with my own Laravel framework specific packages. You come up with your own Zen framework specific modules. Then after that, we cannot reuse easily. So the future is, is in middleware. Okay. I can add to that with an example, practical example that you can see. <coughs> Say, for example, you are the customer, you request for a burger in McDonald's. What happens is, there will be a supervisor who is taking the order. He doesn't do anything. He just passes the request to the next guy. The next guy just makes the party ready and then give it to the next guy. Then that person will uh, put it along with the bun and another person puts the mayonnaise kind of all the things that are required for the burger, there will be a number of people who uh, they will be just taking care of one particular thing and then passing it to the next guy. When it goes to the last guy, it will be returned back. Right? The first person who didn't do anything, he just passed, right? Now he has to do a quality inspection. Is it everything is there? Is it up to the standard? Then he passes back to the customer. So every uh, one in the middleware has a role to play. It can decide whether to play the role before or after. Like the supervisor, he will play the role after. I will just pass on. When it comes back, that is the time I want to take action. For others who just work, they will take action and then pass to the next guy. So if the instruction has come from the customer, say I want more lettuce, I don't want mayonnaise, kind of all those things, it will be just passed on. Only the person who has to act on those instructions will read it and do it. So the minus guy will see, hey, this guy want, doesn't want minus. So he'll just simply pass it on to the next guy. That's how the middleware works. Okay. And uh, there's this uh, one by Zen. Zen, if you don't know, is the company, the main driving force behind PHP. So they have come out with this uh, micro framework. It's called Zen Expressive. It's a PSR7 middleware in uh, minutes. Uses PSR7, uses middleware, routing, dependency injection, templating, and error handling. Currently, I'm using it as an API. So for example, let's say my API has uh, 1,000 endpoints. So I have one class for each endpoint. And when I first started using this, what I did was I only work on the endpoints to get a request and return a response. I did nothing on authentication. I never check for login. I never check for headers. Later on, when I wanted to add authentication to check whether the client is an authenticated client, what I did was I created another action. I put on top of these 1,000 endpoints. I don't go to all the 1,000 classes and then put authentication check. Say, call this class authentication uh, function. No, I just create a new authentication class, put on top of the middleware pipeline. Later on, I needed to do login. So what I did was I created another middleware class logger action and I just insert in between. And that's all. I don't need to so-called change 1,000 files and have them tightly coupled. So basically everything is taking a request and a response. You either return a response or you pass it to the next middleware. So this is the future of PHP. We should not be, let's say, oh, you are from this framework camp, I'm from this framework camp. No, we are all PHP developers. We should be making life easy for everyone, and then we should making, uh, make jobs easier for everyone as well. Now, in closing, okay, uh, let's see. So, uh, that's my Twitter handle. Some people have asked me about uh, my logo before, uh, so I'll just explain it here. Uh, I was a freelance developer before. Uh, I'm not freelancing now, but uh, this is still my personal avatar. So you won't find my face on my Twitter. You will find this logo. So int zone, int zone, integer zone. We are all programmers. We like maths. Uh, Euclidean geometry. We have a point, line, and shape. And prime numbers, two, two shades, gray and white, three, triangle, five, the five points of the pentagon, and seven colors of the rainbow. Now, why prime numbers? Mm, according to Euclid and Euler, 
there is an infinite number of prime numbers, the same can be said of learning, that of which there is no end. So basically, this is my personal motto, to always learn, to keep on learning, and uh, hopefully to always to improve myself, even if I hit the age of, let's say, 80, 90. And I hope that with this workshop, as I say, even if you forget everything, you will forget my face, forget the video recorder's face, never mind. I hope this will spark your interest in PSR. Don't just use a framework for the use of, for the sake of using it. Try to understand it and understand the underlying foundation. What is it that enables this framework to be possible <laughs> for you to be able to build a web application so fast? One big factor is PSR. There's about 20 PSRs out there. We, uh, if you go to the PHP FIG website, Okay, this is just touching on the surface. I've only touched one, two, four, and seven. There's a three, the logger interface, six, caching interface, 13 is in review, and we have a lot of drafts up to 17. So all these are up and coming. So please do take note of that. And uh, this, the, there's one of the speakers who is the uh, secretary of uh, FIG. He'll be speaking either tomorrow or Wednesday. Do catch it as well. Michael so, Lowe's, yeah. Michael yeah. Okay, so with that, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Zion. Um, and before we break,